Hey hey, back with a new video on NEO and it has been an incredible week for NEO. The share price has actually doubled and yeah, lots to talk about and possibly also about a new connection to Volkswagen that um, some of the users have been actually asking me in the comments. And I think now it's getting yeah time to think actually about the future of NEO. Um, well, I've been doing a video on the possible valuation of NEO and you have seen that in my last live video on the earnings call of NEO, I have been still quite skeptical, um, you know, like kind of cautious, conservative about the Hufe deal and that it's still time to, you know, maybe take a step back um, and wait for the news of the actual agreement and the, and the closing terms. But now I think we should also take the time and see like what's on the road next and also, you know, what this whole uh, Volkswagen thing means for NEO here. So as always, if you're a new subscriber, please um, subscribe to the channel, click the button that you get a notification whenever we post a new videos, because sometimes I also do live streaming like uh, really ad hoc. And um, if you're an uh, existing subscriber, thank you so much. Also, thank you a lot for our Patreons that are supporting us um, to help this channel running and reporting about, you know, stocks like NEO and amazing growth stories. Um, so yeah, let's jump into the NEO share price here and we can see that um, it actually, yeah, <laughs> it quickly exploded and went through um, one of those um, barriers uh, and it broke around um, 440 US dollars a cent and went all the way up into this new channel here um, until it met uh, met another resistance around yeah six dollars and 20 cents uh, and now it's kind of um, bouncing back a little bit but it seems like it's keeping well in this channel um, having some support around a five dollar forty um, area here. So um, lots has happened to the share price and it's been doubling, which is obviously awesome as a NEO investor. And um, as always, the disclosure here that is that I'm currently invested in Leo. I have, I have long positions, I have some call options. And in general, I'm looking to stay invested on a, as a long-term investor. However, I'm also transparent. I may change my opinions. Uh, in the past, I have been selling some of my shares when I had the feeling that the funding situation is not going so well. And as always, you need to do your own due diligence. So what I can share with you is my personal investment journey and the insights that I've got. Also regarding this video, as you can see here, um, I'm sometimes in Beijing, for instance, with the headquarters of uh, Volkswagen Group, um, because we are working with some of the brands, sometimes with our business on consulting them, also giving them some uh, workshops in, in that regard. Um, but I'm not invested in Volkswagen right now. And obviously I'm not sharing any internal information and so on. But this uh, gives you also a sense that, you know, we have uh, some good understandings of what's going on in the Chinese market, um, uh, well beyond those brands um, in the automotive market. And of course, uh, we're very passionate about it. And yeah, we're sharing uh, all the information uh, that we can provide on our research basis here on this channel. So I hope you like that. So why has the share price risen so much in the recent days? So while I think institutions have started to realize the potential value of NEO, um, it seems like uh, the, uh, some of the institutions um, have already pulled the trigger now. We saw upgrades by Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and they're giving higher sales um, share price targets right now and thereby kind of, you know, going in line with my or original argument that I'm feeling that um, NEO is actually undervalued uh, trading around uh, back then uh, around roughly 3 billion US dollars um, in valuation and now has obviously um, catch been catching up with that um, despite the fact that still we haven't got the final closing terms for NEO. However, as you can see here in the screen, screenshot um, for the entity, um, the Neo Anhui Holdings, which is, which is the new established entity for Neo China. Um, we see a change from Wang Zhengling to Li Bin as the, uh, the legal representative of the company and also an increase in the registered capital to approximately 5 billion uh, renminbi. So that means there is some progress happening here and that's happening last week. So possibly this has been the initial uh, case where the institutions were saying, uh, like, well, now it's time to invest and to um, increase also our valuation of this company because it seems likely that this deal is going through. However, as a retail investor or like um, 
Yeah, on my personal side, I would still say um, if you're not invested yet in NEO, possibly you want to wait a little bit until the, the, the funding is really announced so that you know the final terms. For instance, there might be some more dilution happening in case that NEO has to raise uh, more capital in order to also provide their inception into this new company. Um, but if you are already invested in NEO, of course, you are benefiting from this uh, um, already happening rise in the share price at the same time of course there is still the risk that this deal would fall through and then neo of course would be in a very bad position with only limited capital at hands um, however it's it's looking less and less likely um, that this might be the case now let's also look at the possible future of neo once the deal is done and what's going to happen in the future because, well, Neo's Chinese name is actually Wei Lai, which means future, quite literally, even though they're using different characters, so their name uh, is actually not a literal translation uh, for future. Uh, let's now look at a better future here and hopefully also a better future for Neo. So one news closely correlated with that is actually an investment by another company, which is Volkswagen in China, um, happening to invest in um, GAC, so the um, construction uh, and manufacturing partner of NIO. As many of you know, NIO is not manufacturing their own cars yet. They are outsourcing it. And uh, this means that they are also relying on a third party producer. Here it's JAC. And actually, Volkswagen had already a joint venture with um, JAC Motors um, in the past, having a 50 50 uh, stake in this um, uh, joint venture with the state owned enterprise here, uh, producing some of their own um, models here. And this is actually yeah, the parent company in which um, Volkswagen is now investing. They're owning now, or uh, will be owning 50% of this company and also increasing uh, their share in JAC Motors additionally. Um, so thereby, um, suddenly Volkswagen appears to be one of the major stakeholders in those companies associated with NIO. So of course, the question here is now, is Volkswagen possibly flirting with NIO in a way, um, trying to, you know, getting closer to NIO, possibly a takeover even of NIO? Well, let's look into that. So first of all, it's nothing new that Volkswagen is closely monitoring um, NIO. Volkswagen is big in China. They make 60% of their revenues in China. They've been in China since the 80s. They're very well established over there. So they know exactly what's going on in the market. And um, I think that was 2019. There have also been um, pictures floating around in the internet where the Volkswagen CEO, Herbert Dies, he was actually, yeah, looking at things at NIO, um, looking at the ba battery swapping, looking at NIO houses. He brought a couple of Volkswagen managers and um, brand owners of uh, Volkswagen brands. And um, yeah, we also know that, um, for instance, um, Porsche Ventures, has been uh, partly um, contributing to the funds of NEO Capital. NEO Capital, though, is its own entity. However, it's, of course, also uh, run by Li Bin, the CEO of, Li of NEO. So um, we see those ties between Volkswagen and NEO. And this is something that I can also say personally from my connections working with Volkswagen in China, that whenever I talk about NEO and um, yeah, talking about Volkswagen managers' views of NEO, they are actually having quite a high regard of what they are doing. So they really um, acknowledge the quality of the cars, um, also um, the, the innovation aspects uh, and everything connected to what NEO is doing. However, obviously also uh, they are quite cautious about whether or not NEO is able to survive in the future because as we know, it's super hard to actually um, build up a, a car company and make it profitable. So in my point of view, um, I don't see that um, this is an immediate way of Volkswagen trying to kind of uh, launching a, a takeover here of NEO or getting in the way of NEO. Actually, what I'm interpreting it is that NEO is actually, um, sorry, Volkswagen is actually themselves ramping up their EV strategy. Um, so they have big plans, for instance, the Volkswagen ID3, which I have been um, spotting running here in Berlin, uh, which I think is uh, a really cool looking car, actually. Um, so yeah, Volkswagen also has like the Audi e-tron, for instance, they have the Porsche Taycan, which are all electric cars. 
obviously not doing that great so far in the markets. And however, um, Volkswagen in total is possibly one of the German OEMs that is taking um, electric mobility seriously and is trying to do a lot of uh, things around there. And this deal, I think, is more or less... Um, a strategic way of securing assets and resources in China. Um, so they possibly have been happy with the uh, joint venture that they have been doing with JAC before. Um, possibly they're also stunned by the, the, the cars that are coming out from NIO um, with the GAC um, manufacturing partner uh, by the quality, which is really a, a premium car, a very well developed uh, quality car. So um, maybe that also influenced uh, Volkswagen managers in order to say, well, um, this is really the partner that we want to have in China if we also want to ramp up our production locally. Also with the entire macroeconomics about, you know, the trade war between the US and China. So it's possibly just a way of securing those assets, making a strategic move um, of um, competing with other leg legacy brands that are now trying to get into EVs. Also, they made a move of um, increasing their shares in Gaoxuan, uh, a, a battery maker here in China. So, yeah, I think um, maybe it was less about NIO really than about the overall strategy with Volkswagen. However, of course, it also has some impacts with NIO for sure. So um, for once, it, during the earnings call, uh, Li Bin, the CEO of NIO, mentioned that le yes, he has heard about those news, but he's uh, actually he's not worried about that it has any negative impact on NIO. Actually, he thinks that this may actually um, have benefits because um, yeah, maybe Volkswagen is putting more money into GAC, also increasing production capacity and so on and also th this will create more efficiencies and so on so yeah it might actually be beneficial to um, a, a NEO here as well and if we look at NEO's 2019 annual report we can actually see that there's a little paragraph in which NEO also speaks about um, their relationship with those kind of suppliers like JIC um, and they're saying they have like um, five years contracts with those providers and after 36 months, there can be new negotiations about um, this kind of deal in which um, NIO actually has to negotiate uh, the capacity they're buying and so on. So yeah, there might be actually some uh, implications on the deal of Volkswagen if they're now trying to secure, for instance, more lines from JAC for producing their own cars. So that's totally a risk and uh, NIO may not be able to have the same uh, contracts um, than they are having today. On the other hand, I do think now with the Hefei deal, the government, the local government investment uh, and uh, JSC also being a, a government owned company here from the same government, um, there should be actually now a more alignment even more for uh, the government to help JAC contribute to NEO here and to come up with some preferential terms despite any shareholding by Volkswagen here. So I do think that the, the Hofe deal here is kind of a, um, a lifesaver here for NEO um, despite of the fact that I do think actually there will be something new happening here. Because in order to understand the outcomes of a possible uh, implication of this Volkswagen deal and also about the future of NIO, which is the purpose of this video, um, I think we also need to look at the business models of where uh, Volkswagen is currently, where NIO is and um, some other competitors like Tesla. So I made this slide here basically just comparing the, the, the business model of Tesla, Volkswagen and NIO and how they are different actually on in their fundamentals because I think the business models are quite different actually. So Tesla for me is the leading player in e-mobility in general globally worldwide. They're the only really vertical integrated OEM. That means um, they make everything of the tech themselves. So they're building their own cars, they're manufacturing them. Um, they're possibly even starting now to manufacturing their own batteries. They have their own full self-driving hardware with the chip that they have been developing as well as the software and the data is all owned by Tesla, which is very powerful. This is also why I invested in Tesla and also why I think Tesla is so far ahead. I think five to six years ahead of any other um, car manufacturer in total. And of course, they also have the charging network. So they have lots of owned assets and they are a unique EV brand 
um, owning the EV tech and the EV manufacturing in a way nobody else does. And then we have those legacy players like Volkswagen who are coming off this old world um, selling internal ga- uh, combustion engine cars um, and they're running this dealership models in which um, they sell the brands that they have um, which are actually also ICE brands in a way because that's what they are associated with through the dealership relations and of course their benefit is that they have large manufacturing know-how particularly around internal combustion engine cars And they have the scale, uh, which makes it very powerful for Volkswagen, producing around 10 million units annually globally. So that's that's massive. That's something that even Tesla doesn't have. And that's also what it requires in order to become a uh, a fundamentally successful manufacturer in the long term. Then we have NIO, which in my point of view is none of those other two players. They are actually, in my point of view, they are a mobility lifestyle brand. And that's getting even more evident if we um, look about uh, yeah what they're doing with GAC. You know, like Neo is not even manufacturing their own cars. What they do is they design those cars and they kind of um, promoting them and building the brand around it with lots of uh, interesting business models and new service offerings. And this, in my point of view, uh, for instance, with the battery swapping technology, they have something like um, um, services for mobility charging and they have uh, lots of cool services which are um, online, for instance, on, on their app. And they really, really own the digital space in China by being successful about live streaming. Watch my video on that, how it compares to Tesla and also um, yeah, selling everything online uh, through the app. So e-commerce functionality, online community, a large user centric driven company. So it's really incredible how they are performing on the digital business model side here. I think in some ways even better than what Tesla is doing, certainly in China. And they're also from the scratch an EV brand. So um, additionally, what they also own and what's getting quite interesting now is um, the software part. They have amazing UX, UI, of, and they are active in the area of autonomous driving. And that might be actually another link to Volkswagen because um, Neo is working together with uh, Intel-owned Mobileye. And they're launching a pilot in Israel now. And Mobileye is also to supply actually um, Volkswagen with um, some similar infrastructure for the cars for actually um, getting autonomous um, vehicles on the road. I'm still mostly bullish on the Tesla approach to be honest however and maybe the mobile eye approach is also now um, switching to a vision based uh, approach might be a good hedge if you are looking to be in the autonomous race. Um, So yeah it's interesting another link to Volkswagen here however much more assets in the term of digital business, um, software and um, yeah, programming, coding, um, all those things that um, the Chinese are usually strong and um, combining it with a new approach. And in this regard, I do think that NIO is actually three to four years ahead of what currently Volkswagen is doing, certainly in the terms of EV, because uh, Volkswagen is just now starting to launch their built up from scratch electric vehicles and particularly in the area of software um, and also mobile commerce uh, and social media marketing, I still think Neo is the benchmark here. Also, if you look at their user experience within the car with um, stuff like Nomi, the digital assistant with AI um, underneath it and uh, possibly um, yeah, what they're doing with Mobileye now uh, in the area of autonomous, I think that Neo is quite ahead uh, on Volkswagen on this. And also I do think, and that's what Elon Musk is always saying, uh, what matters, they are faster in the pace of innovation because now I think in the near term future, we will see many breakthroughs also from Neo side here in those areas and much faster launches of new vehicles that are actually meeting a certain level of um, usability, a certain level of quality standards in both software and hardware. So now, as I mentioned, that NIO kind of faces the the issue that they may have to renegotiate the deal. It's kind of up to um, NIO what is their future business model. So they could, for instance, uh, jump more into the manufacturing side, which they're currently not doing, um, but might be something very interesting 
for NEO on the business fundamentals because as we know so far, and that's also crucial to the valuation of NEO, um, the gross margins haven't been good. They have been horrible. Whereas Tesla with its vertical integration has super high gross margins. Uh, NEO has it not because they are uh, relying on the, on the third party partners. But now with the Hufe government deal, maybe NEO decides to come up with their own factory. So that might be some really immediate news. This, this is one of the options that NEO is now basically having. Another thing is that NIO obviously has different joint ventures in China, for instance, with GAC or Chang'an. So they are doing already um, different brand models, which they um, launch under those different ventures. For instance, the Haikan, you have possibly heard about that. And this is also all of this is paying into NIO's brand right now. And and at the same time, it's kind of broadening the, the manufacturing base uh, and the, the partner base that NIO has in order to uh, stay flexible because my personal impression is um, and that was clear also in a conference call that um, the founder Li Bin he really has a stake in the company which I really like and at the same time he also really wants to be independent I, I don't think he is super happy about that he now needs um, the, the, the government funding in order to continue doing NEO um, and he even mentioned in the call that they have all the rights to purchase back the shares from the government, uh, which is interesting to see. So uh, I wouldn't see that Neo really or Libin under Neo uh, or Neo under Libin really wants to get into the same boat as Volkswagen, which at the same time would also be a powerful combination. Because if I'm looking from Volkswagen's perspective, I think it's super interesting um, to look at NEO and I'm kind of stunned that when NEO was uh, struggling that uh, we didn't hear more rumors around um, Volkswagen taking a share in NEO because well, I think they could just benefit so much from what NEO is doing. NEO could be this powerhouse and as I explained in this uh, business model they are really the company on top of on, on top of the, the value chain and is designing those new uh, technologies, the new cars and um, other players like Volkswagen can actually focus on staying the OEM and actually producing the car so that there might be some synergies here. Um, however, I still only think it's that's from the, the Volkswagen side and not so much from the Neo side. And at the same time, I do think uh, Volkswagen might be a little bit um, cautious about, you know, how successful NIO really will be, um, how how much of a challenge will NIO be to its own brands and so on. So maybe they don't see immediate need to actually react um, to this kind of new competition here. And um, yeah, to sum this up, my outlook here as a NEO shareholder is that NEO has actually all the options uh, that they need with their different joint ventures they're doing with a possible engagement of Volkswagen that may go actually deeper, becoming closer to NEO. That would be a positive as well. NEO may announce their own factory and go its own way, becoming more independent. And all of this actually, in my point of view, pays into the share price and evaluation in the future uh, because we now will be having drivers like, you know, the battery swapping stuff stations being rolled out uh, through the entire country, um, NEO services and business models taken off, NEO can concentrate on the services in, and innovative business models. Uh, we should see growth of the actual numbers of cars that they are producing and selling and we should see some improvements in the margins and I think those kind of news are the news that will ultimately um, drive the share price and I'm going so far in saying that we may see another doubling in the NEO share price within this year. Once again this doesn't mean that it's really likely to happen that way it's just my personal gut feeling and also where I'm you know kind of uh, aiming for within this year and then the year years to come um, you shouldn't be trading uh, based on this information this is not material information it's just my personal view but at the same time I hope you guys want to engage in such kind of a discussion you find it valuable if you find it valuable then please subscribe to the channel um, hit the like button and also share it with your peers and um, actually tomorrow we got a new video coming up um, uh, about e-health in China and I made a new investment in a company that I'm quite excited about so I'm going to do a separate video on that as well but please make sure to also participate in the web in a webinar in the live webinar tomorrow if you're interested into e-health and China and yeah further videos coming up of course and um, yeah thanks for watching see you next time bye bye